Hey, it's Tin La and uh, welcome to the channel. Today I want to see the real world performance of my uh, Duo Xeon 2667 V2 processor compared to the i9-9900K overclock or core to 5 GHz. As you can see, both systems are exactly the same, same graphic card but different CPUs. In the image editing section, the i9 is really pulling ahead of the Duo Xeon processor. And now it's hitting the encoding section where the CPU hit it up to like 100% usage. And the temperature of the CPU is almost 100 degrees Celsius. It's pretty high, I believe, but I have no problem. It's the, the CPU is pretty stable. The Xeon hitting the encoding section as well, running at 80% and up. Now it's hitting like 100%, I think, utilizing 32 threads, 16 core. But still, it could not catch up with the uh, i9-9900K. So it's rolling behind the i9, but it runs pretty like decent temperature. It's very stable. I have it in my home lab system where I run it at 24 seven and it's, it's very stable and cool. I don't wanna run the CPU up to like 80 Celsius range. So that's why. Even though that it's slower than the i9, I think that I'm okay with that. And way cheaper than the modern server class CPU. That's the reason why I choose the Duo Xeon 2667. Now both of them are running pretty decent, but the i9 utilizing, I don't know, new instruction set or something, they utilize at 12% in the OpenCL, while the Xeon uh, running at like 5%. So it does not utilize a lot of cores, I believe, so that's why. But the uh, new CPU, new uh, i9, is, is really like utilizing all available cores to hit up at 12% usage. That's the reason why it might give you better result because in this section, the Xeon couldn't do a lot of like threats at the same time. As soon as the, the i9 hit multitasking, it's like the CPU went up 100% and the temperature hit 100 degrees. It's, I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit high for me, but I don't run this system like 24 seven. I run this one for you guys to see. Uh, and that's why it's really uh, winning over the, uh, the old Xeon processor. So now the Xeon hitting the multitasking now, at the same time, it's hitting like all 16 cores at 100% at 3.6 gigahertz. And it's still, it's pretty decent, I believe it is, but still, if I calculate the, the, the amount of time to finish this multitasking section, it's like 95% of the i9 CPU. So, and now as soon as it's done, it's still drilling behind and at the same time, catching up with the i9. All right guys, it's almost over. And I did that bar racing graph that you can see, it's easier to, to visualize which one is better and which one is drawing behind. So that's it guys and uh, I hope that you like this video and I'll see you in the next video where I test these CPUs in the gaming system. Alright.